and welcome back. We're here uh, watching Back to the Future, Episode 4, Double Vision. Double Visions. Double Visions. Or and the... why is it called Double Visions again? Because I asked two this parts already. This video? I don't it makes know. sense to me. <laughs> really? That's the best intro we could come up with? Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, the game is back. All right. <laughs> I might have to cut that out. Would that be a good idea? <laughs> yeah, but see, now that you're talking about cutting it out, we're already a little bit into the part where the video's really started. Yeah, the whole video's ruined now. I'm sorry. But here's something that's new. Because at the end of the previous video, we saw Doc go off in the time machine. Oh, All I remember and then is he a came giant back bunch. later. I don't remember anything else. Well, at the end of the last video, I triggered the appearance of Q-Ball right over here and the Hill Valley of the Future exhibit, which was previously closed. Well, you didn't trigger its appearance. You just opened it up. No, 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 no. I did whatever you do in the game, which makes it actually open Fall up. Fall from the sky? It was there before. It just opened up. Marty did not open it up himself. It, it happened, but it didn't... It, it, the Object children, was there children. Before. <laughs> I have to turn this walk through around. <laughs> okay, it happened off screen. Anyway, this is a different different plot line. Did we go back and change time again? No, we're going to start a fight between Trixie and Edna. Is it going to be like our fight, Michael? Um, it, it's going to be slightly worse. So you mean more interesting? Yeah. Nice. Well, under the influence of alcohol, my mom made a pass at me. Oh, all right, Junior, you I like that little random clip that he did into a totally unrelated position. Yeah. I don't know why that happened. Oh boy. Marty, shield your eyes. No kidding. She did a lot of these odd. Postcards a few years ago. Ah, good. It's artistic. Okay. <laughs> Why do you want one, Marty? This whole Once exchange again, here, this whole yeah. exchange here, always struck me as a little strange. Have you heard from kid lately? It is well, kind of exactly strange. But Marty's going to do more emotional manipulation, which he does an awful lot in this series. <laughs> is he going to make the police officer cry again? He's going to get Trixie fired. And then pretend that he wasn't responsible for it. That was a, that was a really rude question Marty just asked. <laughs> What's with your teeth, dude? His teeth are green. What? <laughs> Still. You can kind of see his teeth are green. It's these. Dr. Frinkle's algae cakes. A great open fellow. This is an optional item you can get. I was just going to say, do you ever do anything with the algae cakes? You can. Yeah, you can. Oh, what can you do with them? Or is it a spoiler? Well, aside from eating them. Uh, in part number five, you can also get an optional thing of algae cakes. I don't know, it was an item they made and they decided they wanted to keep it. <laughs> okay, so Marty is going to show the picture to Trixie. That's a good thing these things never caught on. Trixie sure got some nice, uh, Marty. <laughs> Definitely something Edna wouldn't approve of. I like how we had to add that this is definitely something Edna wouldn't approve of. <laughs> In case the player can't figure it out. I just want to make sure. Is this you on this postcard? Yeah, that was my first Well, I guess depending shoot. on you your upbringing, uh, cultural okay. background, and whatever other factors. Could be totally Yeah, normal. because... Because the game did not set up the fact that Edna doesn't like uh, Trixie. <laughs> there clearly was not dialogue about that previous in the previous video. Children. Okay, so here's the exhibit which I completely created out of nothing. Rule again. 
and you see that's that's a little diamond shaped prism right i'm setting up for a puzzle later on guys i'm being very clever why does marty go all the way around to try to take the the diamond is my question And we discover the Ark of the Covenant. And that's how Marty's face got melted. Guys, this is not Indiana Jones. <laughs> that was a different video walkthrough we did. And we're still selling those fine leather jackets. Of course, this is 999. <laughs> Problem with the controls again, so I'm just going to use the item on Edna rather than walk up to her. Yes. Postcard that was my Tales of Monkey Island <laughs> trick. To get around the screen by examining things rather than trying to use their actual walking controls. You might want to take a look at this. Why in the world would I be interested in... Oh. Although I'm pretty sure, here? like everything else in every adventure game, I took this so postcard and I walked around to everyone else in the vicinity and showed it to them first. <laughs> your muse has been inspiring if you do that, Marty progress. says the exact same thing. I mean, you'll notice that he said, I'm not going to show that to him. And it doesn't matter who the him is, he's going to say that. Maybe he's talking to himself and trying to talk himself out of looking at it. So, um... George is just going to keep that postcard, isn't he? Did you grow up in? Province, Manitoba. Why? Not even. Dun dun dun. See, darling, the so that's why Edna doesn't like her. Must be she discriminates against citizen, people of so different nationalities. This was I'm such a mean puzzle so solution. She was so happy. Marty, she really enjoyed and, this role. Yeah, and Marty got her fired. It's like, wow, she's Let's really turned her life around, and now she's no longer working with gangsters. Let's get her fired. Yeah. You still have your pro tips coming up there, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I turned those tips on on purpose. So you could give me three seconds of something to talk about. It's very considerate. I suppose, yeah. We all sort of went a little speechless when the nudie postcard came around. <laughs> we haven't recovered yet. And George still has the postcard, I think. Or not George, Arthur. Anyone else noticed how strange the related videos are for this video on YouTube? No. Well, you haven't, because you're you're watching the version on your computer, correct? Yeah. Well, here's one of them. Cops get owned. Epic P prank. Yeah, I have that one too. <laughs> Justin. Bieber's I also have birthday. something in a foreign language. Yeah. Justin Bieber's birthday. Marvel Avengers Assemble 2012. Invisible Mercedes. And what looks to be Adam Sandler, who's been like staring at me the entire time from that little window. In that's my boy movie. <laughs> oh, I, I just have a dude ship from Mass Effect staring at me. Okay, guys, here's something which is related to Back to the Future. I got an email which says, thanks for the Back to the Future walkthrough. Hey. Like, I'll while we were recording this, someone snuck in and heard the conversation and thanked us for it? Hi, the Lost Gamer. I just wanted to thank you for your work on Back, oh, that's on not the Back the to video the Future walkthrough. walkthroughs on Game FAQs. She could have watched them. They linked to the video walkthrough. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. How often does that happen? Rarely. I do that sometimes when a, when a walkthrough has been particularly helpful in getting through a game that I otherwise would not have been able to beat. I, I send a little thank you note to the person who wrote it. People usually only email me if they have a tr if they have a trouble and they don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, and I also got a hate mail from somebody about my MC kids. Really? Uh, what? 
<laughs> what? From Jay Teeter. Uh, uh, I probably shouldn't say his name out loud. Oh, well, he deserves it for sending me hate mail. Oh, now we're going to get hate mail on this video. I recently had the misfortune of playing this game and came across your walkthrough, which serves as evidence you've played through the entire thing. I'm very sorry for whatever mind cancer or other terrible thing that caused you to do this. I hope you get better soon. <laughs> it's not so much hate mail. Hate mail directed more toward the game than toward uh, Michael's walkthrough. But I'm still being accused of having mind cancer. Anyway, back to the future. We're going back to meet to Young Doc. I'm watching this thing about Justin Bieber's birthday. Paul! <laughs> Don't encourage the boy. There's a giant rabbit. <laughs> okay, pointless, pointless cameo from Kid Tannen. Actually, not a pointless cameo. Because it sets up why this is here. You'll see later on in the video. Um, it, it, it's actually going to be amusing. But spoiler alert, something fun is going to happen with that mind map. So here's my question. Does young Emmett seem easily distracted to you guys? Because that's a point that both he and Edna make. That they, they make the point that she's good for him because she prevents him from being distracted. But I was actually just about to say this. It sounds like Emmett is already buying into what Edna is saying. Whoa. Because he phrased it almost exactly the same way that she did. It's like, I get so distracted sometimes. And it's like, you don't listen to her propaganda. I think it's actually that he's a creative scientist and he gets wrapped up in his work and that tends to distract him from anything else practical. Well, not that creative scientificity. Let me, let me go back, start the one over. That's not to say that what he's doing isn't important, but in Edna's eyes, probably, tooling around with degenerate criminal light up boards is probably not the best use of his time. Well, um, to be fair, in the second Back to the Future movie, in alternate 1985, Doc gets sent to a mental asylum. That's people just don't understand him. Yeah, that's alternate Doc. So, I mean, at least in alternate 1985, they thought he was crazy enough to be locked up. Either that or when Biff decided, I mean, when Biff got control of America, he specifically went after Doc. So we have a puzzle okay, coming so up where we have to fabricate a personality assessment for Doc that makes him look like he's a psychopath. Is that true? Yes. Okay. I actually remember this one. I can't believe Edna managed to convince, you know, young Doc to go with this rather than the rocket car. The rocket can. car was far a lot safer and far more productive. The rocket car helped stop Kid Tannen. How is that not productive? It was a freak accident. It's a miracle no one got hurt. Rocket drill didn't work too well either. <laughs> Maybe he just needs to stop playing with rockets. <laughs> why? Wait. Why didn't he make this a rocket personality assessment machine? <laughs> I don't know. Here's the thing I don't quite understand. Why didn't Marty just, like, swap the two mind maps? That's what I thought you were supposed to do. Swap, swap yeah. Emmett's with Kid Tannen's. Because that wouldn't have been enough of a puzzle. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make Doc upset. By electrocuting him, you monster! <laughs> Yes, but now he's upset. Now he's showing red, so I'm saying, hey, he's upset when he sees the picture of Edna. Right. And the machine is going to record that. Now there's a picture of a guy with a mustache, and I don't know, Edna doesn't like mustaches? Oh, it's John Wilkes Booth. John Wilkes Booth, the guy that shot Lincoln. So I guess he's supposed to be a negative figure. Okay, so we're going to have to make Doc happy now. With the smell of delicious stew. Careful. Don't let all the flavor escape. Mm. 
What a bizarre complex you could develop looking through your history textbooks and you get hungry for stew. <laughs> yes. And once again, Marty manipulating someone's emotions to his own benefit. I'm surprised that they need to um, type so many buttons on the keyboard. You think it would just punch one hole in the machine. Hmm. Okay, so he smells the stew, and he's still happy, right? But this is a picture of Officer Parker, who's a good guy, so we're going to try to make him unhappy. Oh. I, didn't, I didn't know you could examine the uh, picture to figure out what response you were supposed to supposed to not get. That, oh, well then... I mean, I click on everything, so that seemed like way bigger of a hint than it should have been. Okay. See, I didn't know, so uh, when I was playing with Lizzo, we, we pretty much guessed on each one what he was, how he was ah. supposed to react. Because I, I would have been on board think, with it just... Yeah, make it more fun. Well, yeah, I would have been on board with it just saying, oh, it's a picture of yeah. Police Officer Parker. And you're like, okay, Police Officer, probably a good thing in Edna's mind. I wonder if that, that, get, that got uh, caught in playtesting. Someone got stuck on that part because they couldn't figure out if someone was supposed to be a positive or negative influence. Okay, so the algae cakes make young Doc unhappy. So that's how you use that item. <laughs> I would never have thought to do that. I think the reason he can't just switch the mind maps is that Doc is probably observant enough that I wouldn't put it past him to not to whatever it is that makes the grammar in the sentence work. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he would be able to identify, hey, wait a second, that's Kid Tannen's dot. Clearly a Tannen, so I guess he's a negative figure. I did not know that character was clearly a Tannen, so... But no, no, no. I mean, upon closer examination, it does say Emmett Brown on Emmett's no, mind that's map. that's the important part, I guess, then. But really, you think you could have just... It's like, oh, I'm just going to cut that little piece off. And what am I doing here? I'm getting stuck. And now I'm bothered by that positive neg negative influencer thing. Like, that, that ruins the puzzle. There's no puzzle. Okay, and Edna likes cross-dressing, so <laughs> we are going to have to make this a no. No, that's uh, that's her brother, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that picture from yeah. Edna's apartment in 1986. It's a kid and a relative of Edna. So <laughs> Should you really be saying this stuff out loud when <laughs> Emmett can hear you? <laughs> hey, I remember back in 1986. But we seem to have demonstrated time and again in this adventure game and in many others where yeah. people don't actually listen to you unless you are facing them and speaking mm -hmm. at them. Yeah, Doc is busy working on his machine. And then I keep electrocuting him, which is see, unkind. See, if this were a Sierra game, you'd shoot him like three times with electricity and then you'd just fry him and mm -hmm. you'd lose the game. Another thing you can do to make Doc happy is by playing music. They've got the record player in the background, and I think I'm actually going to play it at some point in this video. Boy, this puzzle's long. Although not for this puzzle. Trixie, I don't think Edna approves of her, so I guess she's a negative figure. Where did Edna get that picture of Trixie? <laughs> That is a risque picture of Trixie, I would think. Not as risque as the previous one we saw, but... I wonder if it's from the same set. Edna seems surprised, though, when she saw the photograph. I mean, the postcard that Murray gave her. Now, here's my question. How did how did the mind map... I mean, Marty put in the mind map. How did the words Emmett Brown get written on the mind map? Really, really tiny little holes poked into the shape of the letters. Okay. It was science. It was labeled. It. I mean, I guess that particular mind map was pre-labeled with Doc's name on it. I wonder, is it possible to get a moderately low rating on the scale? Like, not quite degenerate criminal, but be like a layabout by the answers that you give? I never tried that, because it's a long puzzle. I think that's the thing, is that, especially when it provides you the answers if you're looking at it, like, this is negative, this is positive, it, it seems to go on a bit long. Yeah. Okay, so here's the song, and it makes him happy. Did 
This is a good song for Marty, because he really doesn't seem to care about all these lives that he's affecting <laughs> and ruining. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's good he knows that Doc is going to fall in love in 70 years, but now he's just doomed Doc to a life of, like, 70 years of being lonely. Well, we don't know that. Maybe he has a relationship at some point that we don't know about. Maybe he even marries, and then, and then she dies. Yeah, when he was in his 40s. Yeah. That's not impossible. Well, no, 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 no. When we saw 1955 Doc, he was living alone with right, his dog, right? Now we're getting somewhere. Maybe in the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in the 60s or in the 40s, Doc Doc found another girl. But it just didn't work out. What's this? That's the black or maybe, or maybe he just doesn't that. know happiness for the next 70 years. The scientist that caught his no, no, no. He found a girl and they fell in love, but Marty didn't like her, so he went back and found him in trouble. What do you think of the picture? <laughs> It's not a very good picture. Constipated. What? Edna said I looked intense. Yeah, intensely focused on taking it. <laughs> Almost bumped us up to a T rating there. Um, I'll have to find a better one. Or is this rated T already? It should be for that picture. It's rated T for Telltale. <laughs> Extremely. Mother has been rather obsessive about photographically cataloging my life. Does Doc have any brothers or sisters? We don't know much about Marty's brother and sister. They don't appear that much. No, they don't. I've got an idea. Mainly because they're there to disappear in the photograph. Thanks, you beat me to it. <laughs> and one of the, the brother is the one with the Mickey Mouse sweatshirt, right? <laughs> that's what I was just thinking of too. That's, their, that's, that's the only thing I remember with his brother Dave. He starts off working as a he works at like a fast food place, doesn't he? McDonald's, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then he, he comes some back. Sort of businessman. Later he in works there. at the office, yeah. yeah. So, you and Edna, how serious are you guys? Well, we both enjoy a good joke every now Maybe and Maybe they'll be in the second I'd game. But i on the whole we're fairly serious people. Why do you ask? No, no. What I mean is, how serious is your relationship? Oh, Getting a little well, personal, I'm Marty. I can't state this with 100% confidence, but I'm professionally certain that I'm head over heels in love. Really? With Edna? What can I say? She's my muse. In the week since we've been courting, she's given me We must so be thinking about that postcard ideas. again. It was a really nice postcard. You sure Edna's the Paul, woman? seriously? <laughs> Talk about Doc and Edna's no, relationship. I'm watching here. the Marvel <laughs> Avengers assembling. Calling? <laughs> Edna? Oh, no, 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 look, it's the Incredible Hulk. He's so green. Before I met her, I was such a liberty gibbet. Liberty Gibbet. That's a word you don't see banded about that often. Yeah. I like the lights on his hat. They look like they go on a Christmas tree. A really big one. <laughs> There's no real reason for him to be wearing that hat. <laughs> he got distracted and forgot to take it off. Yeah. Don't let the school marm exterior fool you, buddy. Edna's got enough warmth to raise a liter of water from zero to 100 degrees centigrade. Know what I mean? What? I kind of wish I did. <laughs> He's trying to say scientifically <laughs> that he likes making out with Edna. Oh, I agree. You do? Like all independent women. Maybe, maybe that's another thing. Maybe that's something we didn't take into consideration. Maybe, maybe Edna's not in love with Doc's mind. Maybe it's all just a physical relationship. That's the only thing she likes. Yes, she loves Doc for his body. She does say one of her requirements for breaking up with him is that his suit gets ruined. So she really does care about what he looks like. And he, well, he is some kind of athlete, right? Didn't we talk about that before? He does. He does run football, which is why he's wearing a football helmet right now. Yes. By the way, whatever happened to Einstein? So she is very superficial. Wait, where is Einstein? It's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, did we, we left Einstein in uh, 1986, didn't we? In a cage. Yeah, that was the alternate Einstein. The Einstein for this timeline, I don't know what happened to him. He's still hanging out in the park, isn't he? Presumably. For Einstein, his entire lifeline is just completely messed up. Dreams and interprets the subconscious desires of the human mind. 
I I think he's gonna be like um. Have you played Time Hollow, Paul? Of course I've played Time Hollow. It's a great game. You know how the cat apparently just exists outside of time and exists in yes. every time due yeah. to like some sort of time mistake? <laughs> I think Einstein's the same way. So Einstein is just going to live forever due to some sort of time travel, some blip in time travel. Maybe Einstein is the statues of a dog. I didn't really have anywhere to go with that thought. Young Doc seems very happy about Oedipal complexes. <laughs> anyway. Oedipal complexes? <laughs> They're delicious! <laughs> and take a look at this. See the mind map on the wall? That was the thing I was referring to earlier. I must have missed it. I, I didn't see it. Oh. No, the joke was I had him talk about the mind map, and then the camera panned to where the mind map should be, but he already got rid of it. Oh, that oh good. Oh, we didn't okay. See it. <laughs> that was the joke. It's like, oh, hey, the camera's zooming in on the mind map, which isn't there anymore. A couple of hours? Actually, it may be more like 70 minutes. I haven't got a couple of hours. I've still got all these mind maps to sort, and the MAM's wiring is still giving me bits, and... You know, I do have to say that um, Edna's three requirements for what she likes in a man really looks good in her grandfather's suit. I mean, it makes sense that she doesn't want to go out with somebody who's cheating on her with other women and somebody who's a criminal, but... Is it, is it specific to that suit, or does she just not want to be dating a slob? No, it's. Okay. I think it's specific to that too. It's that's creepy then. You get back to work. We'll we'll catch up later. Thanks. Because they make a point of the fact that it's her grandfather's suit, and she gave it specifically to him. <laughs> well, it has that much he more of an emotional like impact when we destroy it later. So now I'm gonna solve the suit puzzle with something you might have missed earlier: the oil can. It's a can of disgusting. Doc and his rockets. <laughs> Accounting jokes. I like it. There was a brief accounting pun that you guys might have missed. Anyway, there's no accounting for teenagers. <laughs> That is a perfect theme song for Marty. I mean, if I'm never successful, which sort of explains all of his attempts to change the timeline. Uh, why doesn't he just change into the suit right before the big events, <laughs> like a normal person would? No, he has to wear it while he's doing his experiments. Really? Now see, why can't Doc invent more useful things like that? Suit cleaners. Well, maybe he has, and they're just not the focus of these games or movies. Huh. I bet they all have rockets attached to them. <laughs> Rocket shampoo! <laughs> well, the other inventions we've seen, we've seen the, what is it, the dog feeder, which seems slightly useful. Yeah. And the mind-reading helmet that he had in, like, 1955. Which didn't seem to do anything. Until they make it a mind-reading rocket helmet. And a, a mind-brainwashing helmet, as we saw in the previous video. Do do. Doc wears perfume. Ooh, Paul, this was a question in my um Miles Edgeworth walkthrough. Do you think Miles Edgeworth wears perfume or cologne? Oh, he wears cologne. He doesn't wear perfume. Good, that? good. Okay, yeah. you agree with me. Yeah. Who said otherwise? One of the characters in the game made a joke about how he likes perfume. 
Well, maybe he likes the smell of it, but doesn't necessarily wear it on himself. It was a plot point that he recognized a specific brand of perfume, I guess. <laughs> Which happens sometimes in, in games. It's like, oh, I recognize this odd yes. thing. Yep, that's now part of your character. Sorry. That was in the second game as well, where he managed to recognize the exact type and make of the teddy bear. Okay, right now Marty has inadvertently caused Doc to want to propose to Edna. I don't know, here's my question, because obviously I haven't proposed to anybody, but when you buy the ring and you're planning on proposing to somebody, don't you usually want to propose to that person soon after you get the ring? You might want to, but it may not be the right time to do so. Okay. But, I mean, Doc, clearly, he bought the ring, and he's like, okay, I'm not going to propose to her until a few months from now. It's like, you shouldn't buy the ring until you're absolutely sure. It's quite an investment. Yeah, it yeah. does cost a lot of money, but not as much. It didn't cost as much money, relatively speaking, back in the 1930s, though. It is the middle of the Great Depression, by the way. Did we mention that? <laughs> the Great Depression where we couldn't afford graphics? Oh good, we're back out of the Oh, and guess what, guess what I decided to do now? I made the uh, Hill Valley of the Past exhibit appear. Wow. By visiting Young Doc, so I made this appear. Uh, that was you didn't missing, make it appear! Missing it animation. just opened. <laughs> it all happened conveniently off camera. That volcano looks a lot like the one I did for my 7th grade science fair. I got one or two really good laughs out of this section through First here. First donated by Lamont's House of Ermin. At least they're going to a good cause. They're stuck tight in this tar. So those are the furs that um, Trixie needs. Uh, it looks like you might not be investigating everything. It's a good thing I did this before Emmett's 12-hour time limit. Sorry, was there something else you can investigate? Yeah, I, I seem to recall there were one or two really fun jokes in here. Something about him poking fun at like Ugg Tannen or whatever the caveman was or something along those lines oh, okay see I tried doing that with the uh, place of the future but nothing interesting really happened because mm. of it so I didn't bother to try it with Hill Valley of the past hey Trixie are these furs good enough you know now that we're back out here it's striking just how much time we spent in Doc's lab yeah you know what's weird wearing dead animals that is weird, Paul. <laughs> that just struck me as really disgusting when he handed that to her and said, Here, wear this. <laughs> it's a dead thing. Enjoy. I actually went to an antique shop yesterday and saw a mink stole. Really? Yeah, with the, also with an opossum, a skinned opossum. I don't know, they had skinned animals for sale. I was thinking about buying it, but it was like $50. So I'm like, eh, I don't need a mink stole. So here's a question I have. Why did they decide to make Young Doc a redhead? Why not? Okay. But he's always had gray hair in the movies. I mean, there's no indication of what color his hair is when he's younger, right? They, they, so, they, once they again, why not? Bob Gale about that. And Robert Zemeckis. And that's what they said. What color hair did Christopher Lloyd have when he was younger? It's irrelevant. It's oh, the character, okay. not the actor. Oh, okay. I think it's totally relevant. Is he German? Young Doc is German, yes. Are there a lot of redheads in Germany? Maybe his, uh, maybe his, his mom father, is Irish. We see his father in the in the next video, right? I yes. mean, in yes. part five. What color hair does his father have? Hair colored hair. It's I'm gonna have like to look up. It's it's like a grayish brown, but then again, I'm also colorblind, so that's how most of the world looks to me. You are? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, it's oh. hilarious when I try and play any kind of like military game where it's the brown guys fighting the green guys because I just shoot my own teammates. <laughs> my my dad's colorblind too. Interesting. 
it's it's actually more amusing than it is a lot. Well, it's a liability <laughs> in video games. How do, you, how do you play Guitar Hero? Uh, it's it's actually a little more difficult than it should be. That's not so bad. I mean, there's certain shades of colors that are problematic, and certain ones that are just totally fine. His dad has blondish um, brown hair. That's right, because that's exactly what I was thinking of. Looking at the picture, yeah, his hair does not look anything like the same color as his son's. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say his mom has some Irish in her. They don't even look like father and son at all, besides for the big ears, and the ears are completely different. Just the fact that they're huge is the only thing that makes them common. Anyway, here's another puzzle. Guess what this puzzle is, Paul? Um, I haven't been paying attention to anything we've been doing the past five minutes. Paul, seriously, are you still looking at me? <laughs> that was so funny. I had to watch this hilarious video labeled Invisible Mercedes. It was really good. Car, you couldn't see the car. <laughs> oh man, I love that one. No, 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 no. Okay, so after when the light on his diagnostic thingy went after twelve hours. Yeah, okay, this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah as, as soon as I saw the twelve hours thing, I, I kind of uh, before in Doc's lab, I, I kind of knew that we were gonna do something like this. Yeah, so we're aging the formula by twelve hours. So now it destroys the suit rather than makes it clean. So now I'm going to Doc and telling him to use the DeLorean. So we got Trixie fired. We're ruining uh, an artifact uh, belonging to Edna and this family. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was wondering... The series. <laughs> I was wondering the first time... Sorry. I'll, I'll just go talk to myself. Oh, Nathaniel, go. I, yeah, I was wondering the first time, well, the only time so far that I've played through this game, how Doc was able to capture Edna's attention for so long when Marty, especially when you're playing this game and don't know exactly what the solution is from the get-go, that Marty's doodling around here for like an hour and Doc and Edna are just sort of standing there talking about what seems to be the same thing. And then I realized Doc's just going through all of the dialogue trees with Edna over and over again. And she doesn't know any better to not respond the same way every time. That makes sense now. Yeah, I have no idea what they're talking about, which is so interesting. But it is dangerous because I think it causes old Doc to fall in love with Edna again. What was I going to say? We break the hearts of Doc and Edna, and that seems kind of mean. It's all for the greater good, though, right? Now, why couldn't he have tried, here's another idea, find a better girl for young Doc? <laughs> Why didn't he go? Why didn't he go back in time? You know, say maybe, maybe an extra six months and find him a girlfriend. Oh, but what if that ruined the whole thing with uh, Doc and Clara much later? When did you land this well, this would have been the girlfriend who he has in uh, the forties, but then okay. breaks up okay. with. Right? So he's going to introduce them like oh, ten years. Oh, I don't know. Later. I think that's just opening a whole can of worms. That's going to cause even more problems that Marty has to go back and solve the puzzle uh, solutions. I'm waiting for the one grand puzzle solution where they actually go back in time to the point where Doc ever invents anything and just slaps him on the wrist and says no, and then Doc's drives off. The formula a few hours. Not enough to turn it to acid, though. This was something I thought was strange. You have to use the spray cleaner thing twice. I mean, it has to take two turns in the mm -hmm. DeLorean. No green light yet. Well, it was because, nope. uh, probably no so you didn't yet. just solve it accidentally the first time. Because doesn't okay. the DeLorean only go so far into the future? Or in the past. Let me see, it does six hours on the first turn, and then nine hours on the second turn. And all in all, we need 12 hours. So basically what I did here was I went to Emmett's lab and then left. <laughs> to, uh... Yeah. Waste time. Do do do. Please let the light be green. Yay! The light's green. I don't know. I'm still trying to think of 
alternate ways we could have, you know, changed the situation with, you know, Doc and young Edna without going there. You still want them to get together, don't you? I I, I just don't want... That's your ship. (laughs) Well, she starts crying, and it's like, there's got to be a a less heartbreaking way to do it. I mean, up with someone else. Yeah. Yeah, like Marty. (laughs) That could totally work. Marty <laughs> no, could pretend couldn't. to be interested. No, no. <laughs> well, he'd need to do a double setup because I don't think Edna would just leave him for the next guy. I think he'd need to set it up so that Emmett doesn't look as desirable. And then also introduce her to someone who's just as manipulable. But what if we introduce her to another uh, scientific minded person and d- the same thing happens? But then we're messing up the time stream in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. Because what if, you know, the guy that we meet is in league with the Libyans who supply the plutonium and then Doc can't make his time machine to begin with? Yeah, see? At least with Doc, we know what we're dealing with. Absolute craziness, yes. I don't know, you think Marky could have put up a little bit of a fight earlier on in the relationship, though. I don't know, he could have put a bit more effort into convincing young Doc to uh, dump Edna. But I guess at this point, their relationship is too far too far gone to uh, break it up that easily. Age to perfection. Sorry, I was looking at the picture again. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> Uh-oh. Whoa! Red flag. Don't look. And they're still they're still going at it. See, I told you, their relationship is entirely physical. Rated M for mature. <laughs> Rated M for Marty McFly. Rated M for manipulative. <laughs> Oh, she, I mean, she looked kind of embarrassed there when Doc pointed out the fact that she regularly schedules kissing time with him. I know she's an organized person, but that seems to be a little bit obsessive. She's just trying to be efficient. Okay. You can talk to him later. I go into the lab for a bit? I think I left something in there. Sorry, but I'm afraid mm. the lab is off limits until Emmett's finished tuning the mental alignment meter. But you know, here's another thought. What about Marty going to Doc's parents? Because we know his father is very controlling and mad, right? He could have tried to have Doc's father break up the relationship. Wants to give you the scoop about his thrilling escape from. Well, actually, wasn't it the partially the pressure from Doc's father that? pushed him into doing some of the things that he did here that pushed him towards being a scientist full-time yes but this does not get completely resolved until the fifth episode right but what i'm saying is that mm-hmm. yes i agree that that could have been helpful although she seems yeah, like a responsible enough person that maybe he'd like her and approve maybe i don't, I don't know we don't know what Doc's parents think about his uh, girlfriends. And we're back here again. This this game needs more locations. This uh, episode, I mean. Just well, going back we had forth. everything in the first part. Yeah, yeah, in the but I mean, this this part of the game though, we've just been going back and forth between the two screens. We've only had three locations, really. We had the brainwashing facility, um, we have Doc's lab, and we have the uh, the gym, which is where the science expo is. We briefly saw the courthouse. Mm, that's right. Both alternate 1986 and the alternate. Right. But I think, I think the fact that they have those two new booths show up, you know, Hill Valley of the Past and Hill Valley of the Future, those show up at different times, it sort of changes the environment enough. Well, she 
makes me happy now. Yeah, well, and that the fact that there's an open and space to be walking around well. and not just a small room. Future isn't written. Yeah. That helps. I wonder if that was for budgetary reasons or if it was a deliberate design decision of these are the only places that we really need to have. Because I, I honestly don't think it would be that bad to just have those two locations if the one puzzle about the negative positive mental alignment meter thingy, if that didn't take so long. And also if there wasn't just so much dialogue here between Marty and Doc. Yeah. Are you going to spray your jacket? It's looking a little... Ooh, now, here's an idea. What if Marty went and he picked up 1955 Bith and took him back to 1931 and tried to set up 1955 Bith with Edna? Wow. Because 1955 Bith is the one who's good at breaking up relationships, right? He tries really hard to come between um, Marty McFly and... Lo I mean, George McFly and Lorraine. Do you, do you think uh, Edna would be his type? I think she, any she woman kind of is Biff's type. Actually, <laughs> I don't think Biff is that um, discerning. <laughs> and she clearly is into physical relationships, and I think Biff is into that sort of thing too. But Biff is Biff's pretty physical, though. all right. Based off what we see in the movies, I mean, he's clearly not in love with Lorraine for her mind. Uh, I I I think uh yeah I think you're right I think Biff definitely would go for her but well I don't know would he be manipulative enough or uh, malleable enough I mean would or smart enough for that matter like well, it, I guess it depends on what she's really looking for in a man she wants somebody who looks nice in a suit <laughs> that's right we know what he, she's looking for <laughs> never mind see that that should have been the puzzle then we go back we get Biff and then we have to make sure Biff uh, fits all those uh, requirements. I can't believe they uh, didn't do that. That would have been a weird solution. Anyway, here is where Doc is doing what I'm doing now and trying to think of maybe there's another way yeah. to change the future without a huge breakup. Oh no, don't ask that. She's going to be forever alone with her cat. <laughs> she gets with Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> No, he is not. He is not manipulable. Oh. He's not easily manipulated enough. Well, then maybe he could keep her contained. Yeah. People from spreading. She spends most of her time yelling at her window at people and collecting newspapers and living in the past. Yeah. See, now Edna's future is going to be bad no matter what. Yeah. I think this was an interesting twist. It is, yeah, it's great. Yeah, see, the best of both worlds. Can you hear yourself? Do you know what you're saying? Let me remind you. Maybe maybe it could be a future where um, Doc and Edna decide to adopt children. And that gets rid of the whole problem. And the uniforms were nice. I don't know. I kind of really feel for Doc in this scene. I mean, this is a woman he's been married to for, what, like 60 years, been living with her, been spending all his time with her. I can understand why he's feeling this way. Absolutely. I think you're right, Nathaniel. This is a really nice twist. And meanwhile, there's a hidden option, like, okay, I guess. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, I don't care. I'm a real jerk. Aww. It's kind of true. Now, see, why didn't Doc just, like, punch out Marty at that <laughs> moment? No, Marty. You leave her alone. <laughs> hey, you! <Yeah. laughs> get away from the woman I love!
Meanwhile, Edna's still standing in the exact same <laughs> position she was as if she's talking to future Doc, even though he's not there. No, Doc did one of those adventure game things where he chose the dialogue option that's like, wait right here. Okay, Sierra, and they do. Sierra, where? Right over there. Perfect. You go distract him, and oh, I'll get ready for my This feels so... Adventure. I don't like this. <laughs> oh. Well, we've been building up to it for a while, and we're yeah. finally going to get the big breakup scene. But the idea, and this goes back to the very beginning of this episode, we were talking about, is it That's cheating to get I together got. with your alternate timeline girlfriend? And it, it's very clear that Marty has yeah, almost a total disregard for no, anyone and no, anything no, that isn't I, a part I, of his I, proper I, timeline. I, and he's willing I'm to go to I'm whatever not, lengths no, it'll take to restore that timeline even if it means destroying everybody else's lives because they don't really matter because they're not the true real historical people you have a very good point marty should be more considerate well the idea is if he's successful all of these people will cease to exist so it doesn't matter what they what happens to them or how they feel but really how often is he successful <laughs> you think by now he would learn it's like oh these people are going to be around for a while whether i want them to or not also, that's a lot of power for one person to have to destroy an entire timeline like that. Yes, is Mark but... technically a murderer? No. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, he's making me ask some weird questions. Well, think about Biff. I mean, future Biff in Episode Two, where he temporarily, for a brief period of time, he gets the power of the time machine, right? And he can change the timeline however he wants it. Now, he's selfish, and he just changes it so he's rich and controls the world. I, I'm not going to talk about that. This is an interesting scene. Wait, what was that last part? And I may have taken a picture of her too. Much. <laughs> now, see, well, now, now, why didn't... Actually, no, never mind. I was going to ask why didn't Marty try to set up young Doc with Trixie? But well, there's a piece of dialogue earlier where she said she's problem. not... <laughs> she said she's not a cradle robber. So clearly she's not interested in him because he's too young for her. Little <laughs> Now that was a better plot twist than the one of the old Doc <laughs> turning on Edna. Why does he put on the helmet? No, Maybe no, to don't show her. Oh. I mean, yeah. putting on the helmet does absolutely nothing besides show the lights. Well, it was to show her that looking at you, Edna, makes me feel happy. Aww. That's what he wanted. This is making me so sad. You think he would have at least said, it's like, no, I haven't had a child with Trixie. <laughs> you think he, he might have tried to deny he has? I don't think it ever works if anyone ever says, it, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> I can explain. He has taken a couple of pictures of her, <laughs> so... What <laughs> was that throwaway line? Is that just referring to the picture in the in the projector? Maybe we should have taken the postcard to Emmett and given it to him and see. <laughs> Did you try that, Nathaniel? Uh, probably. I use every item I have on everything if there's even the remotest chance of something interesting happening. Emmett! Go away! But I don't recall anything Where specific. Where are you? So this is basically the endgame sequence Angel, here. Things didn't work out the way you expected, but everything's going to turn out okay. See, I, I kind of like this part. Turns out and... Marty is at least attempting to justify things. The story is over. <gasps> oh, and Doc threw away the ring. And yes, they have the dog statues yeah, do. here in okay, 1931. Still, so where are they in, in regular 1985? Well. Don't do anything crazy. For some reason, they decide to replace them with gargoyles. And as we'll see here, Marty changes the timeline so the dog statues are destroyed. Uh, uh, 
I say? I'm Why are they crazy. Einstein? Got no sense, but I don't care. Why is he and singing Trixie's song? Do you think he would not want to do anything care. that reminds him of Trixie? Stop! <laughs> what are you doing up here? Don't jump! I wasn't gonna jump! Then what do you do where I come when I want to think? Oh, when I want to be alone. Oh. So, let's talk. What are you thinking about? Can't you take a hint? I don't want you here. I don't need you. You don't know what you need. And you do? As a matter of fact, yeah. You need... What does he need? <laughs> There's no option down there, Michael. Get your mind off the problem. <laughs> You need Why? a lobotomy. What? <laughs> Why is Marty just so hell bent on having him see Frankenstein? Because Doc made a point of that being the movie that really changed his mind about everything and inspired yeah, him. But seriously, at this point, we know that Doc loves science, and he's going to become an inventor pretty much no matter what, right? But he might not be the kind of inventor who invents a time machine. <laughs> He's just the inventor who will invent rocket-powered cars. Rocket-powered toothpaste. Rocket-powered dental floss. <laughs> so quickly with rocket-powered toothpaste. <laughs> it would be like two seconds, teeth are clean. There would be no need for dentists in the future. Do really tiny rockets, though. Think about Edison and the light bulb. That was a great invention. Uh, and then Marty would, I guess, you know, somebody would have to go back and erase that timeline so he doesn't create the rocket power. You know, I think Doc's kind of lying to us a little here. His, uh, he's only yellow. He's not red, but he's acting like uh, he's so sad. Can't be that sad. I think he's secretly okay with someone coming to talk to him. Yeah, but it says yellow is being apathetic. Help me out here. Getting on my nerves, Crockett. At least you I mean, he says you're getting on my nerves, but he's not anything. showing red. You care Crockett, about love. I, first breakup's a bitch, but I guess he just doesn't hate Marty as much as he hates algae cakes. <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Now that Edna has turned my heart into a desiccated husk, I'm done with love forever. You care about me. Oh, I guess I'm not going to that uh, one yet. <laughs> Which he does no matter what. <laughs> that must have inspired a lot of Slash fan fiction. And now he's angry. I was perfectly content drudging away in my dad's law office. You show up out of nowhere, get me all excited about inventing, and disappear. Two months later, you show up again, you trick me into making a hero out of myself and getting involved with Edna Strickland. Then you appear a third time and pretend to be my friend just so you can yank the rug out of my Finally, someone's confronting Marty about all this. <laughs> okay, finally, I'm, somebody... I'm kind of on Emmett's side, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Marty needs to hear this. <laughs> you are always ruining people's lives, Marty. <laughs> No, no, what are you doing? You have to give the answers which are mean, otherwise he goes back to being right. apathetic. I remember when I was playing that with Lizzo, we picked the first option and it didn't work, and we just did not want to pick the other one. We felt so bad about it. Like, we just sat there staring at the screen. There has to be another way. Marty just got the lecture about why he shouldn't manipulate people, and the way to solve the puzzle is like... <laughs> completely lying and purposely making Doc mad. What a jerk. I thought Einstein doesn't have his big discovery at this point in history. It's 1931, right? What was Einstein doing there?
Is nobody going to be on Look This Up Patrol? I'm looking it up. But he got a Nobel Prize in 1921 for physics. Oh, hey. Yeah. Huh. I guess he must have already been famous then. No, no, no. He's famous for his work on the atomic bomb, which happened during World War II, which was in the 40s. Well, we from, you know, the future might look back, but someone who's actually active in the scientific community at the time would probably be more aware of his other accomplishments. Hmm. Oh, he didn't become a U.S. citizen until 1940. I guess they just needed a generic scientist for um, Doc to like. I don't know that Einstein counts as generic. You know, you see it in a lot of, uh, I guess, TV shows or something like that, where they'll have um, the generic nerdy person like Albert Einstein. But then again, now that I think about it, um, in Back to the Future, the movie, Doc does have pictures of famous, famous scientists. Right? Paul, back me up here. What? The scene in, in the first Back to the Future movie where Marty goes to talk to Doc. He talks to Doc in 1955, and he goes, 1.21 gigawatts, and then he takes his picture of Thomas Edison and talks to it, and he says, 1.21 gigawatts? How could I be so careless, Tom? It can't be done, can it? Tom's not a famous scientist. Thomas Edison. Still not a scientist. He invented the light bulb. <laughs> I guess that counts. No, but I mean, didn't he? He had a picture of like I'd... Benjamin Franklin too. <laughs> I'm just trying hard to stay out of the conversation. I have nothing to. I have no input. Paul, you need to help us out here. Whose pictures did he have? Did he have a picture of Einstein or not? Was he really a big fan of? Well, I mean, he named his it dog Einstein. Einstein, yeah. <laughs> I think he had a picture of Tracy Trotter. Yeah. Didn't we establish but, that? Yeah. Wasn't his other he one of his it. other dogs called Copernicus? Yes. His 1955 dog was Copernicus. So he just names his animals after scientists. So Paul, how did you do this puzzle in the uh, Xbox I, version or the PlayStation? Poorly. I must have been using the joystick because I do not remember these giant arrows. Yeah, you must have That's been. Very weird. <laughs> so this is how the uh, two statues get destroyed. But how do they get destroyed in the original timeline? <laughs> this is the original timeline. Oh. What are you doing? Trust me. Hold on. No, I guess. They were probably destroyed in the same storm because they have ropes on those things, right? The statues? Right. Thus okay. indicating that they were planning on moving the statues anyway. But they were not destroyed in the other alternate 1985. Yeah, and why, did not, why didn't we hear the other statue go crashing to the ground? Shouldn't that be happening on, in the background? The other statue just crashes to the ground? It was made of styrofoam. Mm. Oh, okay. But it w then there was no reason to worry that it was just about to fall. It was very heavy styrofoam. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, guys, this is basically the end of the, uh, the episode with, I think, a good cliffhanger. I don't like the way this game's messing with my emotions. <laughs> It's like Marty's solving puzzles Marty. you're not aware of that you're a part of. <laughs> As usual, I have not the slightest idea what you're talking about. In fact, you remind me of someone who I am. <laughs> Look what we did to this poor woman. <laughs> this is terrible. This is why I'm asking. This is why I was asking. Oh. Oh, I like this line of dialogue. Maybe I should get a cat. 
and that's exactly what happens. Now, here's an idea. Maybe Marty could have convinced young Edna to get a cat. <laughs> Emmett, you've been replaced. Meow. <laughs> yep, because apparently she's using the cat as a substitute boyfriend. Uh. Anyway, that's the cliffhanger. I thought it was a nice cliffhanger. Good episode. I think no, no, no. after uh, rewatching this, uh, I think this might be my favorite one. It was a dramatic cliffhanger. Quite a, quite a bit of emotional depth for a Telltale comedy game. I, yeah, I think. very emotional. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. I don't. I don't I, think I. It did I, not impact me though uh, as much when I first played it as it did this time. I still don't know why it's called Double Visions. <laughs> <laughs> I Maybe he's that looking at Edna a second time and giving her a second chance. Now that was strange. The the picture of the preview of like Edna walking in the brainwashing facility doing a little fist pump. It looked more like a snap. Like happen. do it. No, no, no. I thought she's like, yeah, I'm awesome. Could be that too. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, the dialogue comes from the fifth episode, but the scenes they show along with the dialogue don't. Yeah, just like with the other episodes. There was a footage at the end that was not actually yeah, from, three, the, uh, from the next game. Ed's, two different Ednas. It said right there if you were watching. Oh. Not bad, then. Solid acting, solid direction. Oh, the German cast, it was the same person. Germans didn't have as big a budget. I guess not. Or more versatile voice actors. No, that's true. I don't know how hard it is to do an old per I mean, how hard is it to do an old person voice? Do you want to try right now? Hey, good try right should. now! Uh... <laughs> no, the old Edna was just a voice sort of like this. You just make it a little scratchy and nasally like that. It's not too complicated. Well, that does it for Back to the Future, Episode 4, Double Visions. Awesome. Yeehaw! It's been Paul, Michael, and Nathaniel. Where? Oh, me. Through the magic of the internet. Thanks, everyone, for watching. You're welcome. I mean, thanks. <laughs>